the world doesn't understand it's it's not a flood area it's a war zone Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland with Lee and Steffi in Australia. We are currently traveling on and off with Lee's parents, Jill and Viv. In last week's video, we arrived at our friend's place to celebrate Lee's 40th birthday. We're out and about in the area of Clunes, New South Wales. And we're out with our very good friends, Colin, Solmay, Tylana, who's their daughter, and of course, Steffi's in there. And we've just come to a river crossing. Oh, it's not even gonna be a crossing, it's a washout. It's a causeway, a floodway. And in this area, they've been having catastrophic rain here, which has been causing major floods for a long, long time. <laughs> what do you reckon, Solmay? Oh, <laughs> Big I like it. Colin's there. <laughs> Colin's a bit of a cheeky guy, the one in there. You can't see him through the window there, but yeah, obviously we're not doing this. This car here has been obviously dragged out of there. Cole's brought me just up the road here to have a look at a landslide that happened about 12 months ago here. And we've seen a few landslides over the years in many of the countries we've traveled, but it's probably the first one I've ever seen in my own country in Australia. Quite a step down in the road. We decided to go to Byron Bay, but it wasn't really the best day to explore town. With all the rain we have to put a plastic on the bed because we've got a conversation. Also because all the windows are very soaking wet, so we protect the mattress with a bit of plastic. We had a really good time with our friends. It was eight years since we last saw each other at our wedding in Thailand. But it was like yesterday, except for the kids growing up so fast. We're gonna go and leave our beautiful friends, they gotta work. Before leaving, we collected our gear that we sent from Japan to their place two years ago. <laughs> yeah, this is our local, but all these ladies, it used to be an old brothel. Oh, really? <laughs> there you go. So read the, read the history of it. <laughs> awesome. Can we give away a cuddle? Bye bye. no idea where we're gonna go what we're gonna do we just have to drive east west and oh yeah we just have to drive west and try to maybe find some dry weather we're now in the town of lismore these guys have been hammered this year in this town and all of these surrounding areas by torrential rain which led to catastrophic floods. We feel a little bit awkward to film. Just wanted to talk about it and recognise what did happen here and what the people are going through. And the community spirit, I think, uh, from what we've heard from Colin and Solmay and Solmay's parents, Lisa and Brett, who lost their house in the floods. Um, it's shocking. Devastation everywhere. Houses wiped out. The main street here in Lismore, I would say every second um, shop is boarded up, completely wiped out. It's terrible to see what has happened and we feel for everybody that was affected by this. Just about everything that you zoom in on is temporarily closed. and we just got them washed, otherwise it would have all gone to landfill. Everything went to a laundromat, an industrial laundromat at Coffs Harbour. So everything here was mud. This was double this amount in here, but we've sold so much. Oh, that's oh, good. It's incredible. 
So the little black mark is where the water level was. And the lady was showing us photos of, of like the, the damage that the flood did and the amount of clothing that were just piled up. And instead of sending it to landfills, she decided to take the entire stock to a professional laundry cleaner, put it back for sale at um, reduced price. So we thought, <laughs> I don't really need clothes, but I really felt that was a little contribution to help the community. So we are getting a couple of clothes and she said it was an amazing response. Like everybody was getting here to buy clothes um, to help the community. It's been pretty emotional today, really. It started on the 27th, I could see the water rising. Um, where I live was right in the middle of town. Having a background of 25 years in rescue, I thought, yeah, we're in trouble. Um, we lost everything, uh, totally. Everything was gone, covered in oil and mud and stuff. And nothing was salvageable. So, I just decided uh, I'm in retirement, but um, the place needs someone with a bit of knowledge and direction. Uh, I come down here to the Koori Mail, which is uh, the indigenous uh, people of Lismore, and they took me on as a uh, site coordinator, medic, uh, gopher, clown, um, <laughs> everything. And um, I try to keep people's spirits up uh, and organise logistics. We are running short now because the 12 hour news cycle is gone. Uh, we're, the, we're the forgotten place. It's been a mammoth task. The kitchen here alone has cooked 155,000 meals. Feed the community, and that's all been mainly from donations of food and stuff from you know big companies. Unfortunately, we're, we're, we're having to dig into what little funds we have, which is not very much. But we're going to have probably up to nine years recovery. It's, it's that bad and it's just it's heartbreaking because this is my town mm. yeah and you know with, without the donations coming in mm. it's, it's just gonna die and a lot of people have moved out of the area uh, which i don't blame them because there's too many sad things that have happened mm. yeah it's without the community spirit and mm. keeping everybody going um lismore will die it's a special heart. An old guy who has arthritis made that for me. Oh. Like that. Like that, like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, you have a very smart mind. I said, don't ask me to put it back together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a GoFundMe page. It's called the Koori Mail uh, Bunjalung Community Relief Fund. You can go onto the GoFundMe website. You can search Koori Mail and you can make a donation that way. And that money goes um, back into supporting the indigenous communities that have been affected by the floods. Facing the sad reality, that morning was quite difficult emotionally. We were silent for most of the drive that day. We're in the little town of Urbanville and it's still raining. The plan was to head to the west, been looking at weather forecasts, radar forecasts and it looks like if we just keep heading inland, just keep going, eventually we'll be out of the rain. We found a free campsite with toilets on wiki camps. However, it might be tricky to find a place to camp. We plan to stop here for a few days to catch up on some work editing videos. It's been two days. <laughs> wow. That's a cockatoo, I think. They're noisy by this. <laughs> two days, we've been camped in a free campsite, if you can hear me. 
And we came out here to try and escape the rain. And to be honest, it has been better than on the coast. We've had fairly constant drizzle, but um, not torrential rain. And today we're gonna head back and uh, hunt down mum and dad and stay in a campsite for a couple of days. We just crossed the border into Queensland. up happening we are really like <gasps> it's very cluttered inside the car and the camper so we're taking everything out with all the rain we've got a lot of uh, mold issue as well so we're gonna do the cleanup it should do the trick it smells like a swimming pool in here better for it to smell like a swimming pool for a couple of hours than for it to smell like a moldy camper thank you for doing that we had Similar thing happening in Japan last year when we had a lot of rain, but overall, I mean, this canvas is eight years old and we open it and close it every day. Overall, it's in good condition for full-time living. So we often talk about this in our videos, how important it is to be minimalistic. And I think uh, essentially we are. I mean, everything we own in the entire world pretty much is in our grizzly and bear. But every six months or so, we will try and do one of these massive blitzes. And the reason is you do accumulate stuff. Today is the day that we decided to just do this huge blitz. And like Steffi mentioned, the mold issue, everything was accumulating. Um, and another big thing was we went to our mates Colin and Soul Maze and we'd sent a box there two years ago. So now we've got like double the rock climbing equipment, everything. So Also, what? we made a decision we're going to leave the kayak behind. If you're wondering why I've got a 27 millimeter socket, must be for something, surely, otherwise I wouldn't have this thing with me. After two days, we were done with the cleaning. We say goodbye to Liz's parents and we headed towards Brisbane for a few exciting catch-ups. Stay tuned and see you next time. <laughs>